Good morning. Good morning, church. So good to see you all here in the auditorium, or should I say half of you. The other half are still out finishing their coffee, which is fantastic. Church is nothing without relationship. So, uh, and in our culture, coffee plays a big part of that. So uh, get amongst it. Fantastic to see you all here this morning. Who's ready for an exciting time of encountering Jesus? Amen. Okay, what about the other 300? Are you guys excited as well? What about online? Put something up in the chat if you're excited about church this morning. Amen. So good. So good. All right, we love to celebrate here in the house. So, I know you're all here for a chocolate bar. If you've had a birthday in the last week, come on, put those hands up. Don't be shy. Let's get some calories into your body. Woo, happy birthday. Anyone out in the street with a birthday that is too shy to come in? What about wedding anniversaries as well? Calvin, is it your birthday? Oh, sometime this year. Yeah, okay, fair enough. Yeah, good, good. Yeah. Yeah, that's 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 how I roll as well, mate. Yeah. Hey, wedding anniversaries. Not a good weekend to get married, eh? All right. Surely, surely we've got something to celebrate. Let's give Peter one. He's, he, he's really just rocking the Santa look. Yeah, mate. Woo! Fantastic. All right, and I do know that it's somebody's birthday today. I don't know if she's here up the front or not but I would love you all to say happy birthday to her when you see her. And that's Gemma Tong, our children's pastor. It's her birthday today. So she loves attention. She loves people smothering her with hellos and happy birthdays. So do that. I'm sure the kids are going to sing happy birthday out there in Power Zone shortly as well. So fantastic. She is such a good children's pastor. And we're so happy that she's uh, part of the team here at Tauranga Ela. Amen. All right. Come on, people, stand up. Stand up. I know you'd like to sit there and look at me all morning, but it's not going to happen. We're going to praise our God this morning. Yeah. And when we praise our God this morning, let's think about who God is. He is all powerful. He is our healer. He is our provider, as we heard last week. It's all about Jesus. The name above all names. And Father God, we thank you, Lord, that we can come into your presence. Lord, and you are here with us. Lord, and we have the freedom to lift up your name. Lord God, we just give you all the praise, all the worship, and all the glory in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. So good. Come on. I just want to encourage you this morning, Matt. Thank you, Nathan. Our God is a good God. He is worthy of our praise this morning.
So not just nice sounding words that we're singing, not just lovely melodies, Lord, but they are words of truth, Lord God. And we declare them in this place this morning, Lord God. You are freedom. And when the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And we thank you for that, that promise this morning, Lord God. And we say, Holy Spirit, would you have your way this morning? We welcome you, Holy Spirit. Would you have come and have free reign in this place? Thank you, Lord. You say, come as you are. Lord, we just want to remove boxes. We want to remove past expectations, Lord, of how we think you look, how we think you move, Lord God. We say, have your way. Have your way in this place, Holy Spirit. Why do it
Jesus from the mountains, Jesus in the streets, Jesus in the darkness over every enemy, Jesus for my family, I speak the holy name, Jesus, shout Jesus, yeah. shout Jesus from the mountains, Jesus in the streets, Jesus, Jesus in the darkness, open every enemy, Jesus for my name above all names in heaven and earth and under the earth. That in the name of Jesus, the powers of darkness have got to flee. At the name of Jesus, chains are broken, walls come down, people are healed and set free, delivered. So Father, we pray that the name of Jesus would be glorified in this place today, in Jesus' name. Lord, touch every man, every woman in this place afresh in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, why we do a tapu? We pray, Holy Spirit, Touch everyone afresh in the mighty name of Jesus. Give us eyes to see and ears to hear what the Spirit would be saying right now in Jesus' name. And everyone who loved the Lord said, Amen. Amen. Give somebody a high five. Yeah. Awesome worship team. Woo. God is good. Wow, that was great, wasn't it? We probably just could have kept going. Hi. We probably could have kept going. Oh, God, it's so good. How are we all doing? Good. You're looking good so far. Let's see how you're looking 15 minutes' time. It's all good. Had a good week? Yeah. You know, man, when you've got God, it's so good. All things are possible. You know, I felt, really felt strong this morning when we were just praying in the auditorium that God has got a solution for everything. If there's a problem, he has a solution. It doesn't matter what it is, guys. It could be a sickness. It could be disease. It could be a mental illness, whatever it may. God has got a solution. And I just want to encourage you that God would like you to know and wants you to know that you can come to him just the way you are now and ask in the name of Jesus, whatever it, whatever it might be, provision, breakthrough, whatever it might be, and he's there for you. And I think that what happens sometimes that we get caught up in the circumstances and we look at the circumstances and then we start to speak negative Things like, we can't do it. Oh, this has got me. Guys, it hasn't got you at all. Jesus has you. Jesus has you. Uh, Matthew 11, 28, 29. Come on to me, all who are heavy laden, and I will give you rest 
for your soul. That is a promise. But at times we don't go to him. We got to go to him. We got to speak to him. We got to call on his name. Whatever it may be, guys, honestly, it doesn't matter what it is. Nothing takes God by surprise. We're all going through different things at different times. But if we come to him, he talks about be anxious about nothing but in all things. Be grateful, be prayerful. I, I, and then, you know, then God turns up. Does that make sense? So whatever you're at, here's the good news. God has got a solution. Take it to God. Don't take it to Pastor Trev, Pastor Dave. Seriously, take it to Jesus. Cast your burdens upon Jesus because why? He cares for you. Amen? You know, wasn't it great last week? Just before we get into it, I, want, I always like to do something a little bit. I think it's funny, you mightn't. But a couple of jokes, all right? So here's the first one. The only thing to take serious in the newspapers nowadays is fish and chips. And even that, you can take it with a pinch of salt. What about this one? When your mom says, you'll be laughing on the other side of your face. <laughs> can you see it? I know it's not a great thing, but yeah, yeah. Hey, so guys, listen. The good news is this. Jesus is alive. The, the tomb's empty. And uh, last week we heard a great testimony from Claire and uh, about God's provision for the house and even employment. And um, I just want to, I'm going to share another testimony in a moment with someone else uh, just to really encourage you. But this, um, the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. So when you hear, now this is not saying we just blab and grab it, but it's saying this. When you hear of a testimony of somebody getting breakthrough, celebrate it. And maybe you need a breakthrough in that area. Say, Lord, here I am. Yeah. You've done it there. You can do it again. Does that make sense? Yeah. And um, so what happened was a few weeks ago, <clears throat> I actually got a message from a young lady in the church. And we're going to show you her now. She, this is Charlotte. This is Charlotte and her husband, Kevin. And this is Miles and Bree, her children. And uh, she sent me this message on the 27th of April. She said, hey, Pastor Trev, we got some pretty unexpected news yesterday. I have been having some problems with my vision and was sent to see a specialist. When I got to the specialist, they did a lot of testing and found that my optic nerves are very swollen and my retinal, is that right? Arteries are very small. I have too much fluid around the brain and if I don't get it treated, it will cause me to go blind. I had this problem eight years ago, and I had several brain surgeries to try and stop it. It went into remission, but now I'm back in the same situation. Only now I have two small children. We wanted to share this with you because we know God has the situation in hand as he did last time. But this load is very heavy. That week, I told her through the week, listen, come to church on Sunday. We'll, we'll pray for you. We'll put you in prayer line. Now, you got to remember, two weeks ago, I preached the message on Jehovah Jireh, my God, celebrate five. Now, so here we go. This is what came in, right? So she came here, and, and, and we prayed for her. Pastor Deb and I prayed for her. And um, I remember the time praying and saying, Lord, we just curse any tumors, anything might be in the brain in the name of Jesus. Now, I'm not saying they were there, but we prayed in that side, right? So she goes to the specialist the next day. Scan on the 2nd of May showed no tumors in the brain, and short it was put on a list and taken for successful operation. Guys, the, the secretary said to her, we normally don't do this. Now, she had to go to Auckland the following week. Everything opened up. She got the best specialist. She got taken from the bottom of the pile. Seriously, I'm serious about this. And uh, taken in, and everything was very successful. So I just got this on Wednesday, right? Um, hey, I'm doing really well. Thank you. I'm being discharged, and I'm heading back to my apartment where we are staying until next Tuesday. I am a few, sorry, <clears throat> I'm on a few different medications to keep the pain down and the nausea under control, but the doctors are happy for me to go home. Thanks for checking in. So guys, that is amazing, isn't it? And what I want to say is, look, what, what we got to realize in this thing, God works with us. So it was prayer plus the gifting that somebody had. There's no secondhand healing. 
Never feel bad if you've got to go to the doctors, you've got to go to the hospital. Never let anybody tell you you've got no faith. God works through them both. But I want to say this as well, right? Because this is really important. The prayer line, we had our own prayer line. So what I want to do is I want to honor those people who are in prayer line. Those people who are in prayer line, can you stand up? Stand up. Michelle, you're on at Yorgi. Come on. Look around, guys. Look around. You see, why I'm doing this as well, we've got quite a few senior people on the prayer line. Guys, you don't retire with God. You see, you see me up here preaching and sometimes people think, wow, it's cool. You know, Pastor Trev's cool. These guys are cool. God is moving through them. Seriously, guys, as, as young Jess prayed this morning as well, the church is not a building, it's the people. And we need each other. And we're here for each other to cheer each other on. Does that make sense? So it was really important that we, and listen, she said to me, Pastor Trev, you're not going to believe this. The last time I had this operation done, it was so difficult, it was so hard to get the finance from the insurance company. <clears throat> she said, and we thought, oh, here we go. The specialist said, leave it to me. He, seriously, he sent a letter and the thing came through, everything was passed. I mean, so what I'm saying is, guys, God provided at the right time for what was needed. And we want to celebrate that. Amen. It's so, so important. Now, what I want to do as well is I want to try and go off Pastor Debbie's message from last week. I'm not as tactful as Pastor Debs. I don't do things as well as Debbie does, but, but I think I can steal a bit of stuff and I can give you a message that will really encourage you. And guys, and this message is called heroines, not heroin addicts. <laughs> heroines of faith, which means women of faith. But what I want to say is this, although we're talking about women, this is for the body of Christ. You've got to realize that you are it. You are God's heroines. You are God's heroes. Your name is being put in the, the book of fame. And we're not looking for fame. You know what I'm saying? You with me? So let me pick up from where Debbie was last week. Exodus 1. Let me do something first. Francis's mom passed away. She, went to be, she got promoted. Francis, how do we say his surname? Stancil. Yeah. And Jerry, you know, you know Francis and Jerry? Francis's mom, right out of the blue, unexpected, went to their sleep to be with Jesus. So we're going to have a tonguey here on Tuesday at two o'clock. You're welcome to come. If you come, could you please bring a little, bring a little plate with you with some food on it? That would be really good. But, but keep Jerry and, 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 and Francis and the family, Javis and stuff in prayer in Cheyenne. Because, I mean, all, all, all Francis is pretty cut, cut up because he loved his mom, which is, which is great. But he's grateful that she's with Jesus. Amen. So keep them in prayer. <clears throat> but Exodus 1, Exodus, sorry. First 8 to 10. I'm going to slow down. I need a coffee. <laughs> Could you imagine if I had a coffee five minutes before I preach? Mr. Greenway, maybe we could arrange that. That would be good. Then a new king, to whom Joseph meant nothing, came to power in Egypt. Look, he said to his people, the Israelites have become far too many for us. Come, we must deal shrewdly with them, and they will become even more numerous. If war breaks out, they will join our enemies and fight against us and leave us in the country. Okay, verse 15. The king of Egypt said to the Hebrew midwives, whose name was Shipra and Pua, when you're helping the Hebrew woman give childbirth on the delivery stool, if you see that the baby is a boy, kill him. But if it's a girl, let her live. The midwives, however, feared God and did not do what the king of Egypt had told them to do. And they let the boys live. Verse 18. Then the king of Egypt summoned the midwives and asked them, why have you done this? Why have you let these boys live? The midwives answered Pharaoh, Hebrew women are not like Egyptian women. They're furry figurists and they give birth before the midwives arrive. You know, I knew one woman in Gisborne, Mary girl. Honestly, man, she couldn't even get in the hospital and the baby was sort of half there. <laughs> Seriously, remember Josie? This, this girl, lovely girl, she had about five children. Seriously, each time they get her in the car and, and there's her, she's sort of hidden out of the whatever. The baby was there, but this is what it was like, eh? I bet you lots of you wish it was like that. It wasn't, but you with me? 
So, okay, so God was kind to the midwives and the people increased and became even more numerous. And because the midwives feared God, he gave them families off their own. Wow. I want to say this first of all. These women apparently were like, I supervise is the wrong word, but they were in charge, they reckon, of about 500 midwives at this time, right? I just want to say this. If you work for the health service, you don't have to be a midwife. I just want to say, good on you. Well done for what you do. I want to honor you. I want to take time to honor you. Is there any nurses in, in the place? If there is, can you stand up? Even admin, whatever. Come on, stand up. Come on, let's, let's give them a clap. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Guys, listen. You're the heroes. Seriously. You're the heroes. You really, really are. And um, I just want to say, like, for these two women, these people could have lost their lives because of disobeying Pharaoh. But it said they feared God. Now, Debbie talked a little bit about it last week, but they had to have a faith. They had to have a good conscience, and they had to be courageous to do what they'd done. I mean, guys, we, we don't realize how, how powerful and how strong and how, how awesome women are. And I'm not lifting this up on trying to tilt anything, but man, what a difference you make in people's lives. They respected God. That's what the fear of God means. It means they respect and honor God and they obeyed his commandment, okay? So rather than do what Pharaoh said, now here we go. There's twice in the New Testament when we're called to disobey civil authority. You ready for it? Here we go, seriously. Number one, when the civil authorities tell us to do something which God has not called us to do, in this case, murder babies. Do you want to know something, guys? We need to keep praying that our government will change things, this whole abortion thing, all that stuff's gone. Do you realize that there's something like 73 million babies a year that are actually aborted on on the planet? Seriously. In fact, when you look at those numbers, one of the most dangerous places to be is in the womb. And we need to be praying, but praying, Lord, there will be a turn. There will be a turn of a fancy within, within our government and the governments around the world. Seriously. But that's one time because it's taken life. God gives life. Somebody said to me a while back, oh, pastor, it's good to see Russia attacking Ukraine. I said, well, why? He said, well, there's a lot of gangsters drug dealers and all that stuff there. I say, bro, there's a lot of them everywhere. (laughs) Oh, no, God's judging Ukraine. I said, no, no, no. Then God could judge New Zealand because they're everywhere. I said, what you need to realize is the God that I serve is a God of life. And you can't tell me that anyone can in another country, I don't care who it is, we've got no right to go in and murder innocent people. Seriously, God gives life. So that's him saying we can say no to something that the, the civil authorities would ask us to do that God has commanded. As he said, thy shall not kill. So that's one. You with me? Yeah. Number two, when civil authorities forbid us to do something which God has commanded us to do. Two different things. When they're saying, don't you do that? In other words, if they come and say, don't preach. Don't share the good news. We are commanded by God to share the good news. Are you with me? That's the second one. Like, the sad, you see, sad you see, is that what you call them? They were sad, you see? Sad people, you see? Yeah, you got it. They tried to shut the disciples up. You got to realize, they tried to shut them up. It says in the book of Acts that they were jealous. The disciples, your disciple, they were called to heal the sick to set the captives free and to proclaim the year of the Lord. With me? They were doing that and these guys came and said to him, you read, you read your Bible, Acts chapter three, the, the beggar gets healed. Right away, these guys are on. Stop doing what you're doing. You have no right to use that name. Guys, I'm gonna tell you something. It didn't stop them. Even when they get flogged, they would not go against what God had called them to do. Does that make sense? Yeah. You still with me? You know, I I don't want to be lifting me up, never. But let me just share this too. When you know that God is calling us to be merciful and be kind and be loving, 
guys, we got to do that. When we know that he wants us to be forgiven. You with me? So don't do what God has asked us to do. And I'm thinking this one thing. That guy that I shared with years ago about going to forgive one of my ex-bosses. When I felt God saying, you need to go and forgive him. The first thing I thought, he's an idiot. He's a plonker. All these reasons why not to. God said, I want you to go, right? Come on, come on. I was a bit afraid inside because I'm thinking, this guy, he's not going to be very nice probably, but I still went. So what I'm saying is, guys, it's better to obey God than sacrifice. And obeying God doesn't mean you always feel comfortable. In fact, you'll you'll feel, (laughs) but that's where you got to trust him. The good thing is, when I went to see him, when I spoke to one of the workers about why I was there, he said to me, you're you're not, you're, you're you're in an occult. You've lost the plot, seriously. This guy was serious. He said, you can't be serious. You know, I looked at him and I thought a bit, maybe he's right. Maybe I should just go and get back in the car. These, these thoughts came fast. Thank God I didn't do it by his grace. But can I tell you something? Because I went to that guy and I knew God had put it on my heart. Don't do this because pastor is saying it. Let the Holy Spirit put it in your heart. Because I went and seen him and asked for forgiveness, the guy who said I was a nut give his life to Jesus about 12 months later. Seriously. And I'm going to tell you, I know what happened. I know he thought I was, but then he must have started to think about some stuff. Wow. I really know old Trev, and he's not, like I wasn't that sort of person before I was saved. Were you? Like I had to argue the point out. I wanted to scrap pride, arrogance, all that stuff would get in the way. But that's what God does when you become a new creation. Does that make sense? So obeying God is important. Now listen, these women obeyed God. They could have lost their lives. But because they obeyed God, these women and their family, because of their obedience, they were blessed. In Exodus 1, 20, 21, in the CEF, it says this, God was good to the, is it up on the screen? And what does it say? Because they what? Oh, love it. He blessed them with children. Listen, guys, that's what the fear of God is. The fear of God's not this thing about, well, there can be a sober part of it, don't get me wrong, but it's not this thing about, ah, God's going to beat me up. It's a respect and an honor. Seriously, that's not really in the church at times that much, talking to myself as well. Seriously, if there was a bit of more fear of God, some people wouldn't be as loose with this or with this. It's a fact. I, 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 I'll, I'll put my money on against you. I don't gamble. My wife does. <laughs> but you know, but seriously. So what I'm saying is, guys, come on. Come with me in this. Listen, and uh, not, not be harsh, but come on. To obey God is an awesome thing. Jesus said to the disciples, if you love me, you'll obey me. He wasn't beating them up if you love me. He was saying, hey, if you love me, you'll obey me. But through obeying God and trusting God, there's blessings that come from it. Because of that, think about it. If it wasn't for Shipna and Puah, because that's what you call the midwives, you wouldn't have your Bible. You probably wouldn't be here today. Guys, they done this before it was law to do something. The Ten Commandments hadn't been written. That's pretty awesome, isn't it? Whew! What are you laughing at? I say to her. Okay, so better not ask him up there. Okay. So obviously a word didn't go down to, okay? Okay, we'll not even go there, right? Let's stay focused on the Lord now, lovely people. Do you know when babies are born, let's be honest too, you know you nannies and stuff, you come in, Pastor Jeff, look at this, this is the grandchild. Or this. Like, and most of the babies are beautiful. I mean, they're all beautiful, but I remember when Caleb was born, like he wasn't beautiful. <laughs> when he just, when they just pop, when they just pop out. Like they're, I'm not being rude, but they're like a bluey color and they're wrinkly and stuff. And you know the game dogs with all the things on them? Hey, watch this kid, watch this. This child wasn't impressed with his family. <laughs> Thank you. I just thought we'd need to do something just to break the ice a little bit in case I got two things. But they were blessed, guys. We need to obey God rather than man. Come on, guys, seriously. 
We need, because I'll tell you why, the fear of man will prove to be a snare. Proverbs 29, 25. But whoever trusts in the Lord, yep, come on guys, will be kept safe. I'm going to tell you, I know some people, and I'm not judging, I pray for all people, but I know some people, because of the fear of man, they're not walking with God anymore. They got put under pressure. Even some people, the, the, the fear of man and relationships and stuff. Oh, I'm going to lose my relationship if I start going my relationship with God. Guys, I'm going to tell you, if you trust God, your relationships will end up better than what they ever were before. And that word snare means a noose, like a noose around your neck, or it means like a ring in your nose. Some of you got a ring in your nose and not being naughty. But you see them bulls with the ring in their nose, and they put a big chain on it. That bull's got a lot of power, but whenever the fellow pulls the chain, the bull doesn't pull against it. He goes to where he wants. But it can be a snare. The fear of man can be a snare. These guys didn't have the fear of man. They had the fear of God, which led to deliverance. I mean, they it led to Israel multiplying, and it led also to them being set free. It's pretty awesome, isn't it? You know, look at some of the people in a minute, the fear of man. Seriously, look at some of those people. And I say this word wrong, but you'll know what I mean. The martyrs. The martyrs. Look at those people who refuse to deny their faith and get their head chopped off with ISIS. That's challenging, guys. And I see, I said, Jesus, I never want to go and live there. I don't think, I, I'd be honest, I, 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 I don't know how it would be if that happened. These guys sing amazing grace. And we want to complain when we got a pimple on our cheek. Do, do you know what I mean? But, but seriously, these guys didn't deny the Lord. They got beheaded. But they got promoted to be with Jesus. And Jesus said, if you lift me up, if you confess me before men, I will confess you before my Father who is in heaven. You know, as I say, the, the, the disciples who healed the beggar, they didn't deny Jesus. They were flogged. And I said, they actually went out and praised God. Because here's the thing, guys. Almost finished. Do not fear. Matthew 10, 28. Do not be afraid of those who can kill your body. Because they cannot touch your soul. Fear God only who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Wow. That word there, fear, means be alarmed. They... Do you realize something? Jesus is telling his disciples this. Guys, don't be afraid of those who can kill you. Why was he telling them it? Because he was prophetic. He could see what lay ahead. You know, this thing about the Christians and we all want to roll out the red carpet and all being caught in wool and stuff. Life's not like that, guys. Life is terrible sometimes. It's hard. Yeah, come on. But you know what? When you've got Jesus, he'll bring you through the storm. That's, that's the difference. You with me? So what Jesus was saying to the guys is, hey, I'm letting you know something. Look what happened at the start of the, the book of Acts. They get put into prison. Stephen gets stoned. X, Y, Z. He was telling them, but don't fear. Don't fear man. Who, yeah, he can kill you. But you know what? You get killed. It goes, believer, straight to heaven. But he's letting them know. He's setting them up for Victory. Amen? <sighs> At least one person thinks it's good. <laughs> nah, thank you, Stefan. I appreciate it. Guys, I just want to sit in this a minute too. Chocobit. Is that the word? Chocobit was obviously Moses' mother. Pastor Debbie spoke lovely on that last week. I give her all the points. <laughs> so, so we'll not need to look at those points now because I've done that. I'm telling lies, actually. I didn't give her anything. I'm stealing stuff from her. But, but she was an amazing woman. But think about this too. Come on, guys. Just before I go into that. Shipna, whatever it was. Pua. Sifra. Sifra. Is that it? I should sing the sermons. Sifra and Pua. That's not Pua. Pua is what you eat, isn't it? Let's continue on trip. The thing is, if it wasn't for them and Moses' mother, seriously, we wouldn't be here today. But that woman, Moses' mother, was brave. She made a stand. And let me tell you something. 
you, what I'm trying to say is, you never heard of those two people, um, Shipra and Pua. <laughs> Poo! Ah! Yeah. The, you, you don't read about them being in God's Hall of Fame, but they were heroines. If they hadn't done what they'd done, and that's saying, there's mullers and there's women sitting here today and you think, man, I haven't done much. Don't you believe a lie? You're a champion. You need champion on. You need encouraged and, 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 and cheered on down the road. Amen. You know, Miriam, Moses was the youngest son. Aaron was the oldest and Miriam was the sister. Miriam would lead with a tambourine. She would lead praise and worship. Yeah. Aaron was the high priest, right? And we know about Moses. But can I tell you something? They all lit their lamp from mom's flame. Mom set the way. They watched how mom led her life. And you know what? Can I say this to some parents? Mom had to let Moses go at one time. Sometimes we got to let our children go. We got to let them go and trust God. Trust God for them. And that, I know that's hard at times. We, we've been there and, and we are there at times. But we got to trust God. And stay focused and pray for them and believe. You know, he, she let Moses go and he came back again. She even get paid for feeding her own boy. God provides. Yeah. So they lit their flame from her torch. Guys, women, you make a massive impact. Don't underestimate the impact you have with your children. I'm going to tell you something. I'm so glad I'm a man. Well, I, seriously, I used to look at my wife and the things she's doing, and you just women do the same. They're taxi drivers, they're nurses, they're cooks, they're counselors, they're uh, sport coaches, they're everything. I'm going to tell you something. You have a bigger impact on the children than what we do. Now, man, that's not let's hide away. No, let's lead by good example. But the, our wives, the women are the ones who nourish the kids. They, they're with them way more than what we are. Is that right? So, give yourself a clap. You're a man. What are you clapping for? <laughs> now, I, I, I like to have a bit of fun, I, you know. You got to have fun. Guys, I tell you, let's keep having fun. There's too many serious people about, ooh, you need to do this and do that. Listen, I don't need to do nothing. I just need to keep trusting God. That's the thing. Now, there's some, there's some moms here... And, and you didn't have children, but you're a spiritual mom. You make a big difference in other young people's lives. You know, Deborah was one of the greatest leaders of Israel. She led Israel. She was one of the top judges. She never had children. Well, I, I can't read anywhere where her and her husband had children. But she was a spiritual mother. So don't think, oh, because I have the children, I don't count. No, you do count. You make a big difference. And don't stop making a big difference. Keep getting beside them young people, whoever it is, praying for them, encouraging them, cheering them on. Because your life and what you do is important to them as well. Amen. So I'm finishing off. Puya. The name means brilliant. Glitter. Means to shine. This is what I want to finish with. Matthew 5, 16. In the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. Let your light shine, eh? You're a shining light for Jesus. When you're loving on people, when you're helping people, when you're praying for people, others see it. And I'll tell you what, you're not meant to cover your light. You know, the, the Bible says that in Jesus was life. John 1, 4. And that life, come on, was the light to all people. In you, there's life. This is men and women. In you, there's life. And that life is the light on the others. There's people being hammered. They're stuck in darkness, everything else. A city on a hill that's lit up. It can be seen from the dark place. Come on, guys. Let your good works, what does it say? Let, let, in the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. God draws people. As you love on them, as you get beside them, encourage them, pray for them, everything else, don't stop doing it. Keep being heroines and heroes for Jesus. Your name is not in the book of Hebrews at the minute. 
but God loves you. You need to hear this. He's proud of you. He's well pleased. Let's not snuff our light out. Let's keep being that shining light in the community. Amen? So, Lord, I pray for every man and every woman in this place. As Nathan gets ready to come up. Lord, I pray in the mighty name of Jesus. I thank you for these heroines. We thank you for ordinary people who loved you, who respected you, who had reverence for you, who were obedient to you, Lord. That, Lord, that you'd flow through them and you brought healing, you brought life, you brought deliverance to people around them because you are an awesome God. And Lord, you partner with them. Because of their obedience, you move by your spirit. Lord, I pray as a church, not just for our church, but every life-given church in this city and in this nation, that, Lord, that we would shine our lights, that, Lord, that we would shine for you in Jesus' name, that we would bring hope and healing and health to those around us in Jesus' mighty name. Father, I pray that the Spirit of God would encourage every man and every woman in this place today for them to see they mightn't be a shipra or a pua, whatever, but, Lord, they're special in your eyes. They're wonderfully and fearfully made. Lord, I pray that we'd have a heart to reach out to those around us that as their light shines, that you would draw them by your Spirit in Jesus' mighty name. Father, I pray for families. Maybe there's moms who's struggling a bit, dads, with, with maybe their kids or, or off the reels, whatever it might be. Lord, I pray for your peace in their heart. Thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord, that we can trust you with all your heart. And as we don't lean on our own understanding, Lord, that they, I can acknowledge you that you will direct their paths and you'll direct their paths. Lord, that you would draw them back by your spirit in Jesus' mighty name. Lord, that we pray for those who are backslidden, Lord, that, Father, you would draw them back by your spirit and, and they'd even be more in fire for God than what they were before. That, and because of their gratefulness, of your grace, your mercy, your kindness, and your forgiveness. Lord, I pray in Jesus' name. I thank you that your plans for us are for good. I thank you, Lord, that your hand is upon us. Father, I pray that each and every person here this week would make a difference wherever they go, that that light would shine, that they would take opportunities to pray for people. They would take opportunities to speak life into people, encouraging words, etc. And Lord, I pray that we would hear great testimonies coming back on the goodness of God you, through them in Jesus' name. And everyone who loved the Lord say it. Amen. Let's give the Lord a clap, guys. Thank you. Amen.